Hello, welcome to Northern Canada, early February. And instead of the normal minus 25 and 2 to 3 feet of snow, what you're seeing is plus 5 degrees and most of the snow has receded because of a, a Chinook, which is a warm wind that's been blowing for about 10 days now. We've seen temperatures as high as plus 8, plus 9, and a lot of the snow has receded. You can see the grass just showing through there. So one of the things I like to do if the temperature is fairly warm, say minus 10 and above, is, is to do a bit of shooting. I don't get much chance in the summer, so uh, i going to make the most of the winter. So today I'm shooting this little beauty, which is a Mortimer rifle. <clears throat> and this is a, a rifle that would have been made in around 1810 by H.W. Mortimer and Son, which was a branch of the Mortimer family that operated in London. And they produced high quality sporting rifles for the English gentleman, if you like. <clears throat> but anyway, this is a, a modern replica made by Pedasoli in Italy, and it's a faithful replica, as much as you can do nowadays with uh, financial and safety constraints of what an old Mortimer rifle would have been. Oh, let's have a look at the bits and pieces on this rifle and we'll start at the end. Now I've got the uh, the ramrod sticking in the barrel and it goes all the way in and I don't know if you can see that mark. If this gun were loaded the ramrod would only go in so far so the gun is safe. So let's take that out Bear with me here, just trying to get enough room. Right, the ramrod's out, and then the ramrod fits in this channel here. Let's get the bugger in. Yep, so we'll put her there. Okay, so we've ascertained that the gun is safe and cannot fire. Now then, it's a flint lock, so let's start with the lock itself. The lock is the firing mechanism of the gun. And this is probably uh, the flint lock in its final form before the changeover to uh, percussion locks. Um, you've got the two, well, three main components. You have the cock, which holds the flint. The flint is a small piece of sharp stone and these are English flints and they come from one particular place in England which seems to supply the whole world right now. There is no flint in North America. There is some stuff called chert which will do the job but it's not quite as good as proper English flint. The other part here, the part that pivots forward and back, is the frizzen, also called the hammer rather confusing people think this is the hammer in true terms it's not this is the cock this is the hammer but we also call it the frizzen and the other part <coughs> if you can see that is the pan and the pan holds a charge of powder and yeah, close the frizzen put the gun on full cock and now the gun will fire if you pull the trigger. So we, we know it's not loaded, there's no powder in the pan, so this gun is quite safe to pull the trigger. So there we are, I don't know if you saw the, the spark. We have two shroud, metal shrouds here which direct the spark onto the powder. The powder will then ignite. And if you can see that, you can see the vent hole. The vent hole will transfer the flash fire into the chamber here which contains the main charge and the ball. The main charge would ignite and send the ball on its way. So fairly simple, but fairly sophisticated. This is what's called a rainproof pan. And these shrouds, although they direct the sparks, they also direct the, the water away from the pan. And if you were to prime this pan, seal this with beeswax 
shut it down, you could then go hunting in the rain. There's also a thing called a cow's knee, which is, is leather or canvas shaped like a cow's knee, which, uh, which is oiled and it, and it fits over there. You would carry that and that would keep the rain off. Or you could carry the gun upside down under your armpit and shield it from the rain that way and, and it would work. Also on this gun, there's a safety. And this is very unusual on a, uh, on a flintlock. So if you push the safety forward when the gun is on half cock, which it is now, if you drop the gun, the gun would not fire. Okay, so what's next? Well, well let's look at the barrel. The uh, case color hardened piece there is the, uh, the end of the barrel, which is known as the breech. And that contains the, the, the chamber where the powder is ignited. <coughs> and this is an octagonal shape. I don't know if you can see that, that's octagonal. Then we go along to this part, which is 16 sided. And then we go further along, and then the barrel is round with a wedding band transition. And what this does, it gives strength at the at the combustion chamber end, and it gives lightness at the muzzle, which helps with the balance of the gun. The stock is a shotgun style stock, uh, which you would fire from the shoulder. It's quite broad and it's fairly modern, and most people would be familiar with that kind of stock. Um, steel butt plate. The next thing we're looking at is sights. We have on this rifle, which is a target version, uh, a Creedmoor sight, which is an aperture sight adjustable for windage and elevation. This is an early variation of it. I'm not sure if this is quite period, but uh, this is what the gun came with and this is what is allowed in competitions. So I, I, I would think it is period. Anyway, that, that's, that's not a bad sight. Aperture sights are very accurate. The other end of the gun, we have a globe sight. If you can see that post in there, there's a post with a large bead on it. And what you would do is you would center that in the middle of your aperture back here and place the bead at the six o'clock point on the bolt and hope to hit it. Another thing about the stock is we it's half stocked. The wood only goes halfway up the barrel. Uh, it's a substantial barrel. It doesn't need support. So uh, into to make the gun lighter and better balanced, uh, we would only have a half stock on it. These are wedges. You drive them out from this side, and then with the ramrod removed, you can take the barrel off for cleaning. Here you'll see a dovetail where the original hunting sights were on. And although it was accurate, I wanted to set it up for target use, so I, I took those off. I could fit them back at any time. Um, we have a single trigger single trigger it's not a set trigger and that just operates in the normal way so that's the gun now what do you need to make this uh, this thing shoot well first thing you need is powder so we've got two brands of powder here we've got the American Goex and we've got some old British Curtis and Harveys you'll notice there's an F here and a 3F there well that refers to the size of the granulation 1F is, uh, is for large caliber guns and cannons, and 3F is for rifles and pistols. Um, I'm actually shooting 2F at the moment, so I'm halfway between. I'll put them out of the way. <coughs> powder flask. Right, you gotta keep your powder dried, you have gotta keep it convenient, you gotta have a method of dispensing it. So this is a powder flask you push to dispense. It's made out of brass very important. You don't want steel. You cannot afford to have a spark when you're handling powder because this is real gunpowder. This is the stuff you used to see in the old westerns where they were blowing things up. This is it. Um, so you got to be careful with it. You got to handle it correctly. This is a good way of doing it. You can also have powder horns which I don't have. Uh, it doesn't really suit my style of shooting. Powder measure. 
this is graduated at the moment she's graduated for 75 grains you would flip the top over fill it up from your powder flask slide it over you got a handy funnel to tip it down the barrel one thing you never do is you never fill straight from your powder flask because if you got if you're doing a bit of shooting and you got some embers in your gun still burning at the bottom of the barrel you tip this in you got your thumb on the tap everything's wide open if you have a flash up the barrel it'll go up the spout ignite all the powder that's in here and you might have a quarter of a pound in there and if that goes off in your hand it's like a hand grenade and that's going to ruin your whole day so you don't want that to happen <clears throat> we've got a small powder flask this contains 4F granulated powder and this is what we use to charge the pan uh, you don't have to use this you could quite happily use uh, the same kind of powder that you're using in your barrel but it's handy to have this it's got a spring uh, spring loaded dispenser and you can just put a bit of 4F in the, in the pan and 4F ignites very easily in that kind of situation next deal is short starter this is what you use to start in the barrel the balls down the barrel give it a whack before you use your ramrod um, patches what we do is we use a patch in conjunction with a ball these are 0.53 of an inch balls and we do we use them like that we push them down the barrel so the ball is completely wrapped in the patch I don't know if you can see that the ball is wrapped in the patch and it's actually the the patches that engage the rifling these patches are soaked in neat's foot oil I like to use neat's foot oil it's uh, it's a natural oil it doesn't burn very fast and it provides lubrication to the barrel makes the gun easier to load and and helps the barrel on its way out other things toothpicks you use these to plug the hole in the uh, in the prison yeah sorry in the uh, you use these to plug the vent hole under the prison there and this is if you want to uh, to leave your gun loaded for a while say you've been hunting you stop for lunch you blow the powder out the pan stick one of these in or maybe a feather and then that will stop the uh, the main charge from igniting should the hammer fall because these guns will fire on occasions if even if you don't have powder in the pan here the flash will go through the vent hole and set off the main charge so that's a safety thing and it also helps to clean it out too but you don't want to push it in too far you'll break it off um little brush for brushing out the the pan and a, a metal vent pick that you would use if you're doing a fair bit of shooting and the uh, and the vent hole got crudded up plastic vials with powder in pre-measured so that you don't have to go through the rigmarole of measuring out your powder if you're hunting out in the field uh, or even if you're target shooting if you've got these you save yourself a bit of time um, a little tin with some spare flints in Another little tin with stuff like cleaning patches, uh, cleaning mop, brush, little gadget for if you get a ball stuck, you put this on the end of your ramrod, screw it into the lead ball, pull it out. And another thing here, which is a patch puller. So you put that on the end of your ramrod, and then you can hike out a patch that, that got stuck spare cleaning jag ramrod end so there we are that's all the stuff that you need to go shooting black powder and in the next video I'll try to get the GoPro going and we'll actually load and do some shooting okay that's it for now hope you enjoyed that hope it wasn't too boring for you and we'll see you next time
Be good to you. Be good to one another and look after yourselves. Bye for now. Bye.